Ooh, okay. The lighting is currently suboptimal, but we're just gonna roll with it. Hi everyone, and today we are doing another book haul. Uh, I promise this is the last one for a while, and I did not intend for this in the first place. So today, me and my partner had a little date day. We went to South Park, San Diego, and we got coffee and lunch and everything. And it just so happens that an indie bookstore is there, so we went to go to the book catapult. And then after we went to the book catapult, I really wanted to take my partner to Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore because they specialize in sci-fi fantasy books and he mostly reads sci-fi fantasy books. So um, it was sort of like a bookish date day for us, which was really fun. Uh, we just got back and I, <laughs> I bought an embarrassing amount of books. So without further ado, I'm just gonna walk you guys through kind of what I got from these bookstores. Unfortunately, I did not get any b-roll of me actually in the bookstores because I forgot my camera and I was too shy and kind of too, way too excited to really do anything but look at books. So I apologize, you're just gonna have to take my word that I went to the book catapult in South Park and Mysterious Galaxy bookstore. I got a sticker from the book catapult as proof that I went to the book catapult. Um, the first book that I got from the book catapult is Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. I have never seen this book before but it was in their I think recommendation section and this book is about a, an author that is about to publish her second book. She's single and kind of dealing with life. Looks like she has to come to terms with a lot of the bad stuff in her life in the midst of this book. So I thought this was interesting. I like the cover and any book about authors or the publishing industry or writing in general. Apparently I've just been really enjoying lately so I think I will really enjoy this as well. And the next book I got was a paperback copy of Signal to Noise by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is one of the older Silvia Moreno Garcia books that I still have not read and I was super excited to see this on the shelf because I really haven't seen this in any bookstores personally until today. I thought this was sci-fi but it might just be uh, historical fiction. It has to do with uh, music and whatnot, which is very exciting. As you guys know, I also love books that are focused around music and bands and whatnot. So, and of course, this is a Sylvia Moreno Garcia book. I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia, and I can't wait to see how she tackles this genre. The next book is a book that I have been wanting to read for the longest time, probably longer than I've actually been on BookTube, and that book is *The Decagon House Murders* by Yukito Ayat. Ayasuchi? Ayasuchi? So a bunch of people go to this island where a bunch of murders took place before just to investigate it um, and then they just randomly start getting killed off even though the island was abandoned and there was no one else before them. So it's a closed box mystery meaning that there's no outside forces that could have committed the murder, so it's like a mystery in that way. I'm not explaining it very well. I will link the Wikipedia page down below on it. Pam from Pam's Shenanigans also talked about this a while ago, and ever since she recommended it, I was like, I really, really have to read this, so I am so happy that I got a copy of this. I have not seen this in person in a bookstore, so very excited to read this and I'll let you guys know my thoughts when I do get to it. And then kind of on the same branch of Japanese mystery fiction, I got Death on Gokuman Island by Seishi Yokomizo. Uh, this is another, I think, closed box mystery. That's definitely what it is getting the vibes of. It's definitely a murder mystery and the detective that shows up to try and solve the mysteries actually ends up being one of the suspects, which doesn't make sense since I don't think he was there, but we'll see. Shoot, I forgot to grab a bookmark from Mysterious Galaxy, so I guess I'll just have to go back. But yeah, we then went to Mysterious Galaxy and like I said, they specialize in sci-fi fantasy books, but I found a lot of not sci-fi fantasy books. I'll talk about this more when I get to those books, but they also specialize in hosting author events for book publications. So they have a lot of signed books. And uh, as you can imagine, 
I found a few books. The first book that I got at Mysterious Galaxy is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This is actually a romance. It's not a sci-fi fantasy. And I heard about this both from I think Mina Reads and then A Clockwork Reader saying that this was a really good romance. And the main character is an erotica author. I read a book where someone was like an audiobook narrator for erotica but not an author herself. So I think this is gonna be a really interesting take. And I just heard that the romance is actually quite beautiful, so I'm very, very excited for this. The next book I got at Mysterious Galaxy is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. I have been wanting to read this book ever since I really got into my phase of reading books about bands. And then I read The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and I really enjoyed that. The bookseller at Mysterious Galaxy actually told us that Grady Hendrix does so much research when he writes his books and it really shows in the book itself. So you could tell in The Final Girl Support Group how much research he had done about final girls and all of those murders and fanaticism about those murders and whatnot and so I'm super excited to see how We Sold Our Souls takes on the whole rock and roll scene as well as apparently selling your soul to demons. Only a girl with a guitar can save us all. I am so excited for this. And of course it wouldn't be a trip to Mysterious Galaxy if I didn't get at least one paperback sci-fi fantasy. So I picked up Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Elias from Elias Reads loved this book so much that he named his cat after the titular main character. So I'm really interested. I heard that like you should go into it absolutely knowing nothing and just vibe with it and I'm really excited for that. It seems like it's going to be a fun adventure. I heard that people either love it or hate it and I really hope that I'm in the former group. Okay so the next three books I got are signed copies and when I tell you I nearly screamed my head off when I saw that they were all signed. I am just so super excited to have these. I don't usually like owning hardbacks but if it's going to be signed by these authors I'll do it for them. The first book that I got a signed hardback copy of is The Way of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is so exciting because I don't have any signed books by Tiffany D. Jackson, but she's one of my favorite authors of all time. The universe feels like it's finally being righted, like we are going in the right direction because Mari finally has a signed copy of his Tiffany D. Jackson book. I talked about this in my fall TBR but The Weight of Blood is the latest Tiffany D. Jackson release and it's kind of a take on Carrie where there's a bullied girl and prom but I think that instead of Carrie being the victim Carrie is the perpetrator in this book which is very exciting. And the next book that I got a signed hardcover copy of is God Slayers by Zoe Hanamakuda. This is the second book and I think the last book in a duology. Uh, the first book being Gear Breakers which I read last year and I was actually on the PR team for. This is a young adult sci-fi dystopian sort of where there's queer girls and mechas and I think that's really all you need to know. A lot of fun but I'm really glad that I saw that they had a signed copy and a very cool thing it comes with a little bookmark in it which is very exciting. I think that Zoe must have left these or sent them with these books really happy and I feel very lucky to have picked up this copy. And the last book that I got in this haul that is also a signed hardcover copy is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. I have heard lots and lots of wonderful things about this book and I originally was going to wait for it in paperback but this is another signed copy so I, I, I was like yeah you know what this is this is worth the splurge, this is worth reading it in a hardcover copy and I think that I honestly want to read this before the end of the year, so I'm glad that I picked it up today. I don't know much about this. It's a YA fantasy romance, I believe. A Clockwork Reader also talked about this book, and I believe she said that it read a lot like really good fan fiction for a full metal alchemist ship. It's honestly giving me kind of like Ava Reed vibes, so if I can get just like a smidgen of Ava Reed vibes, but also a fantasy romance, I think I'm gonna be really happy with this. Those are all the books. 
So those are all the books that I got on my little book date with my partner. I am going to now enter a book buying ban from now until my birthday slash Christmas in December because I definitely don't need any more books. I don't have any more space on my TBR shelf for any more books and I think I need to give my friends and family time to find books that I don't already own to give me because that is that is typically the issue we run into in December is that I've continued to buy books up until my birthday and people are like what what do we get you now Mari just a gift card Oof. consider this the start of a book ban from mid-September until mid-December we are not buying any books besides the ones that I've already ordered that are coming in the mail that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed seeing me throw my money at independent bookstores. I hope you have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye! Also outfit check where I can't. Do you see me in the